Welcome to Excel Business Math Series number 21. Hey, we're using the workbook, Business Math Chapter 2. You can go to my YouTube channel, then click on my college website link and download this workbook. Or if you're enrolled in the class, just go to our Chapter 2 website. Hey, um, we need to talk about fraction, going from fractions to decimal equivalents. Hey, wait a second, we've already done this. We've already seen with formatting how easy it is, and also in our PDFs, we've seen how to do it by hand. But let's just, we have a big table of numbers. These are the formulas I use to create these numbers right here. We saw how to do um, fraction format like this. But to just create a whole table with decimals, let's just make the formula equals this. Notice it's a relative cell reference, so it'll automatically take that. And I'm going to control enter. And then I'm going to copy that formula over using that little, uh, uh, fill handle in that angry rabbit. Now let's click in this cell and hit F2. Notice, oh, that's a relative severance. Now it's looking here. Is that the same number? If I want both of these numbers to equal that one, will that work? Yeah. This one's looking there, but this one's looking there. Now, let's format this with showing 15 decimals. Control 1. I'm going to select number and go type, click there and type 15. By the way, Excel only shows up to 15 significant digits. That one doesn't matter there. But what happens when we double click and send this down? Hey, we know how to click, because this is a formula with formatting. If I click and drag down one, that tells Excel to copy the formula and the formatting. But watch this. Because there's something to the left all the way down, what happens if I double click this little fill handle with my angry rabbit, my little crosshair? goes all the way down. Now let's do the same thing here. Control 1. I'm going to show six decimal places. And then I'm going to double click and send it down. So that's a quick way to get a table of uh, fraction decimal equivalents. Now divisibility rules. Uh, this is when you're trying to eye something. You're looking at it, and you need to quickly figure out if it's divisible by something. Now, there's a great method in Excel, but if you're not in Excel and you want to do it, you have to do it this way. Now, I remember taking my graduate um, entrance exams, and they had lots of questions like this. So these rules really came in handy. 2, 5, and 10, we probably all know. By the way, I don't think. They ask questions like that anymore on graduate exams. Uh, but 2, 5, and 10 are easy. If the last two digits are 0, 2, 4, 6, or 8, then it's divisible by 2. 5 if the last digit is 0, 5. 10 if the last digit is 0, right? How about 3? If the sum of all the divi digits is divisible by 3, some of us may know that one. The rest of them are, are more obscure. But look at this. 9 is the same. If the sum of all the digits is divisible by 9. What about 4? The last two digits are divisible by 4? 6. If the number is even and, so there's two conditions here, so it's even and the sum of the digits is divisible by 3. Uh, 8. If the last three digits are divisible by 8. Uh, so let's go see this 9 uh, here. Let's see how we could do this. We have uh, this number right here, 15,974,805. Is it divisible by 9? I just put the digits here and added them. Uh, added them up using sum. Now there's a function, we've already seen this a few times, called mod. And it will tell us the remainder. Well, if this number is divisible by 9, it means the remainder is 0. So let's try it. Equals mod. Uh, I'm going to click on this, comma, 9. Because remember the mod, you put the number in the divisor, and it gives you the remainder, right? So when I hit Enter, it better equal 3. Oh. That means, because it's not 0, that it is not divisible. 39 is not divisible by 9. Now here, let's take this one a step further. You can see I put this formula here. I just copied the format down. Let's try this, equals mod. And now I'm going to click on this, comma 9, close parentheses. We just did that formula, but let me show you an extra twist. Excel knows true and false formulas. So if I ask the question, this mod, we already know it's going to give us a 3, right? But if I, if I say, is that 3 equal to 0, what is the, this is a logical statement. Is 3 equal to 0? 
false. If I had equal to 3, it would come out true. But watch this. When I hit enter, there you go. That's a true false formula. Just to show you, since uh, this, or if I click in the cell and change that to a 3, notice that it comes out true. Now I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut for undo. There it is in 2007. Control Z, because I want to keep it there. False. It is not divisible by 9. Now, uh, one last thing, and then I have some cool sheets for you if you want to practice. Word problems with fractions. Um, this is straight from our textbook. The problem says, hey, if you get a Social Security check worth $1,275, uh, and your rent expense is one-third of the Social Security check, and the other expenses are two-fifths of the remaining amount, how much do you have left? There. What I do is when I read the problems, I list all the variables, and I put my numbers here, and then I state what the goal is, how much is left. All right. Now, step two, we can do some calculating. And remember, as we saw in earlier chapters, listing, um, labeling everything clearly um, makes it much easier to understand. If you don't label it, you're not doing a very good job. And most spreadsheets on the planet Earth, done by people out in the working world, don't have good labels. You know, and what happens? They come back tomorrow, right? And they look at the sheet and they're like, man, I, don't, I forget what I did here. Let alone coming back one week or one year later. So be polite to yourself and always label everything. All right, rent expenses, one third of Social Security check. Hey, remember, of means multiply. So watch this. Equals this times this, and then enter, $425. Now, hey, um, we violated a rule there. I'm going to hit F2. We are multiplying, and it just happens to be that it comes out uh, to be, actually, I don't know, because that format. We better check this. I'm going to highlight this whole column here and Control-1 and go to General. Now, it just so happens that it comes out at one third of this is 425, but that violates our rule of rounding. Remember, what is the rule? If we're multiplying decimals, oh, this is the chapter on fractions. Does it still apply? Well, of course it applies, because decimals are really uh, fractions in, in hiding. So 0 0.333333333 is really one third. In fact, the fraction is uh, a more accurate or complete way to represent that number 0.3333 because you'd have to keep writing till you were dead to get, to get all the three and then you wouldn't even get all the three so one third really uh, is uh, the decimal is, is a better way to write that decimal 0.3333 so hey we are multiplying decimals we're going to use this calculation in subsequent um, the, the result of this calculation in subsequent calculations and we're required to round because we're dealing with money so F2 and I'm going to put my round I'm going to the penny, so I'm going to do comma 2. Notice the answer will still be the same. But we are, um, uh, in fact, we can highlight all this and do uh, control 1 and do currency. How about that? But if we were to change this uh, fraction here, our formula would already catch it correctly. Now, the remaining amount equals, oh, yeah, the original amount minus the 425. Now, let's think about this. The whole confusing part of this problem is it says other expenses are two-fifths of the remaining amount. If it said two-fifths of the original check, then it would just be that times that, but it's not the remaining amount. So we have a, um, a calculation to do to get this 850 before we can even deal with the, the other expenses. Now, this one equals round the remaining amount after the one-third uh, rent times, and I'm going to get my two-fifths, comma, two, close parentheses, 340. Now, it's straightforward. How much is left? Equals are the amount we had before we calculated our other expenses minus the 340, and we're left with 510 bucks. Now, step three, write your answer in words. Um, if we have... So there, um, I'm a very fast typer. 
There it is. If we have a check for 200, uh, 1275 bucks, and one-third of the it is used for rent, we would then have 850 bucks left over. From that 850 if we use two-fifths for other expenses, we are then left with $510 after calculating both expenses. Don't forget to come back and, <coughs> and write your answers in Word. Not only might it be required of your particular project, but it certainly helps you uh, in your mind summarize what you just did. Now I have an extra sheet here if you want to practice. Uh, there's some uh, basic instructions here. Uh, you want to uh, reduce, oh no, here, here it is right here. There's the little instructions, right in lowest terms, convert to mixed number, convert to improper fractions, find LCD, and finally a couple, uh, there's that word problem we just did, and convert to a fraction. And you can practice here, and then over here are the answers. All right, um, that's chapter two. We'll see you next chapter for chapter uh, on percents, the big chapter that gives lots of people trouble. But we'll try to make it nice and easy. See you next video.